Finally, on February 6th, 1962, the most important motion picture purchase of modern times was headlined by newspapers, television, and radio. Five million paid for Fair Lady by Warners. The tremendous price paid for the film rights gave evidence of the scope envisioned by Jack Warner, who personally undertook the production. This was further supported by the announcement that Audrey Hepburn would play Eliza Doolittle. No one doubted that this was the lady for My Fair Lady. The indisputable first choice for the role of Professor Henry Higgins was Rex Harrison, the man who created the character. Despite the studio spin at the time, the casting was not totally a foregone conclusion. Many people staunchly believed that the two stars of the stage show, Julie Andrews and Rex Harrison, had earned the film roles. Jack Warner, however, didn't agree, feeling Julie Andrews lacked the film experience and Rex Harrison lacked star status. Instead, he offered the role of Professor Higgins to Cary Grant, who turned it down, insisting that only Rex Harrison could and should play the part. While Warner ultimately accepted this, he refused point blank to even consider Julie Andrews, insisting that Audrey was the only contender for Eliza Doolittle. With this understanding, Audrey accepted the role. The final cast was an ensemble of fine actors, including Stanley Holloway, bringing to the screen the role he created in the stage play. It's hard to imagine now, as he so completely owns the role, but Holloway nearly lost out to James Cagney, whom Warner initially wanted for the part. With cast in place, Warner assembled a crack team, including the acclaimed but reputedly fiery director, George Cooker, and Cecil Beaton, the renowned photographer and designer who was responsible for the overall production design as well as the lavish costumes. For months, almost the entire Warner Brothers studio was devoted to the most elaborate preparation in its history. From a treasure house of silks and satins, furs and jewels, highly skilled artisans would create a world of elegance. Sets were a building as rarely seen before. Whole sections of London, the grandeur and squalor of Covent Garden. The splendor of the Embassy Ballroom. The richness of Professor Higgins' study. The high fashion of Mrs. Higgins' drawing room. All these were constructed in the most particular detail. This attention to detail carried through to every aspect of the production, including, of course, the performances. Audrey worked hard on her Cockney accent, and even harder on the songs, recording tracks of such a standard that her singing drew spontaneous applause from the crew. She injected the same nuances of personality into her songs as into the spoken words, keeping the character finely balanced. This balance was thrown off with a decision that appeared to have been made long before she sang a note. At Jack Warner's insistence, her tracks were re-recorded by Marnie Nixon, a highly trained and technically excellent singer, but of a more formal style. The result is a mismatch between the voices, but worse, of the character. One delivery is warm, natural and freewheeling, the other tight, perfect, but unnatural. The decision was a sad flaw for an otherwise magnificent production. It also probably ended any chance of an Oscar nomination for Audrey. The enormously successful My Fair Lady received 12 Oscar nominations, including all the major acting awards except Best Female Actress. At the awards ceremony, Audrey, who must have felt slighted, graciously presented Rex Harrison with his Oscar and then looked on as Julie Andrews came on stage to collect the Best Actress Award for Mary Poppins. 
Julie Andrews's opening words must have made My Fair Lady's producer squirm. First of all, I'd like to thank Jack Warner. <laughs>